Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. Today, we are going to be learning how to fix a flat on the trail. So in honor of the fact that it is summer and prime riding season, we have decided to do a series where we leave the comforts of the shed, where we have every single tool we could possibly need, and go out on the trail and demonstrate how to do some simple tasks. Today, we're gonna to be talking about fixing flats when you're on the trail. And here's what we would carry with us to do this. Tire plugs, CO2 cartridge plus the inflator. We also have a spare tube. This is the Tubalito, it is ultra lightweight. You may or may not want to bring a tire lever. It depends a bit on how hard your tires are to get off the rim. If you know that you struggle with it, don't put yourself in a position where you're trying to get it off with your fingers like 50 miles from help. For longer rides, we bring a hand pump in case the CO2 or CO2s do not cut it. If it's a really long ride, a patch kit. This is definitely your worst case scenario. Now it's time to head to the trail. Here we have a mountain biker in distress. He appears to have a flat tire. Let's see if we can help him out. When you hear this noise, you probably recognize it. The first thing to do if it's a little hole like this, especially one that you can just stop with your finger, is to put it to the bottom and see if it seals on its own. If obviously, if you were only using a tube, this is not gonna work, so you're gonna need to skip to part three. I've got it pinned against the ground. This is your first line of defense for a small hole. So let's see. Actually, that worked. That wasn't what I wanted to happen because <laughs> I wanted to keep making this video. <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> Tire sealant is amazing. So obviously this method of just putting the hole at the bottom, trying to get it to seal is only gonna work if A, it is a very small hole like this one, and B, you have a little bit of time to leave it like that because the sealant won't really harden until it has time to interact with the air. So if you're in a race and you have a hole that's, you have a hole. <laughs> If you have a hole, if you have a flat, you may want to go straight to tactic number two, which is a tire plug. Okay, well, I had to make this a hole again because tactic number one worked. <laughs> so I'm just absolutely destroying this tire. The things we do for you guys, there it is. Now we have a hole. When you have a hole like this, the first thing you want to do, because it is small, is put your finger over it and try to prevent as much air from leaking out as possible or have a friend do that while you get your tools out. There are so many different tire plugs and options on the market. What we've been using most recently is the Mule system because it is so easily attached to the bike. As you can see, this has not tight. As you can see, we have our plug with a bacon strip in there, and then this system also has a quick link, and there's another magnet that goes this for your CO2. However, sometimes when we are doing a race where we really don't want to mess around with the small bacon strips, carry a Dyna plug. We found in general the Dyna plugs are a lot better if you have a big flat, like you can repair quite a bit with this. As you can see, this side is quite big. So if you have a pretty big hole, Dynaplug is great and it's really small, so it's easy to carry this. This is from Genuine Innovations. It's a little um, plugger widget doodah, like kind of the same as this, but with a bunch of strips. Um, obviously, we like to have as much attached to our bike as possible because that's less things in your pockets or in your pack. But for this size of hole, which is quite small, even after me stabbing it, we are going to go ahead and plug it with a bacon strip. It is actually what they are called, is bacon strips. So basically, you find your hole, find if it's fully flat like this one is now, because we talked for too long. <laughs> Don't do this in real life. I feel like it helps to pinch it a little bit to really see and to be able to hold and in it goes. Nope, just kidding. Get it all the way through the hole, like in the plugger. There we go. Okay, I see. I feel like there is a little bit of a technique to this. Like I find it kind of difficult. I feel like if you twist a bit as you're going in, how do you pull it out without, there we go. Not bad. We'll, we'll rewind the tape a bit, but I was holding this down while I was pulling this out because obviously you can also just pull the whole darn thing out. 
if you have, um, you know, a multi-tool in your pack that has scissors or a knife on it, it can help to cut off the end of this. We are often not carrying something to do that in a race situation, so I'm not gonna do that right now. But for like a bigger ride where you're gonna be riding, or if you just wanna like keep your tire alive for like quite a few more rides, cut that plug down after you blow it up as tight to the tire as you can, and that way it'll be less likely to pull out when you brake hard. So let's see how we did. Blow it up. The next thing we're gonna do is grab our CO2 and air it up. As you can see, Mackie has his CO2 on this magnet on his bike and the head is taped on. Why is it taped on? Well, you can't put it all the way on without puncturing your CO2 and making it go pshhh. But it's also a pain to have to like look for your head. <laughs> that would be a pain. <laughs> Where's my head? You don't want to be looking everywhere for your head <laughs> when you are in a crisis situation, aka a flat tire during a race or just on a ride where you want to keep up. So electrical tape for the winds. There are a few different kinds of CO2 inflator head widgets. Um, this one is my preference. You just screw it down and then when you get it really tight, you back out a little bit and the air starts coming out. There's also like this kind where you don't have to do that. Screw it all the way down and then you push up, you don't back out. And then there's also something like this, which is a little pump that you can also attach a CO2 to over here. This literally says CO2. If you want like a one and done pump and a CO2 holder, you could look for something like this. It really doesn't matter. The point is you need to know how yours works. So don't just assume that because I'm doing this video on YouTube, you have exactly the same thing, because you might not. Okay, so you screwed that all the way down to puncture it. Mm -hmm. And now what? Okay, so then you unscrew it slightly. It does it cold, but it's not as dramatic as people think. People are like, you can't touch it. It's fine, you'll be fine. Especially if you're wearing bike gloves. Which I am not, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so what I would advise with this is then to find your hole and repeat what we were doing earlier, which is to say, put it on the bottom. This is sealing no problem, but sometimes if you have a really big hole, you might need your plug and then you need your sealant to activate around the plug. So don't give up if you hear hissing immediately. Give it a second to come around. This looked like this worked fine and dandy and we are good to go. I'm gonna tell you a secret now. I've been running this tire with a plug in there for like three weeks and that's why we're doing the flat tire video on this tire because I just pulled the plug out at the beginning. The point is plugs do work. I would say it's very important to get comfortable with tire plugs and CO2s whether you are racing or not because it is just so much faster and so much more pleasant and like I said, I've been running this tire for three weeks with a plug in there that means that just because i flatted a brand new tire i didn't have to like throw it out immediately it's been working great it wasn't brand new but whatever it's very much not very brand much new not now brand new. but the point is tire plugs are great i'd really recommend practicing this if you have a tire that you've worn out punch a hole in it practice using your co2 and um it is worth wasting a CO2 to be able to do this on the trail when you want to get back out to riding. Especially because if you don't practice, you'll probably end up wasting a CO2 on the trail because yeah. you don't know how to use it. Yeah. That definitely happened to me the first time I used a CO2. It happened to me that one time in a race. Yeah. Yeah, but the, luckily Mackie was lapping me <laughs> and he was winning by so much that he stopped and fixed my tire and then he still won the race. I might have also won the race, I can't remember. I think you might have. Might have, yeah. Anyway, college racing days. That was a nice little hole. I don't know how it happened. Not all flats are nice single little holes. Sometimes you shred your tire and there's absolutely no way you're plugging it, even with the Dyna plug, even with the stands dart, like it is just day over, time to put a tube in. Or maybe you started with the tube in, so you have to swap the tube. So that's what we're gonna talk about. And for that, we are going to summon up our trail magic and produce another wheel and tire that has a hole in it. Here we have a tire that is very, very destroyed. You will notice that it is on a brand new wheel um, with 
out things that are necessary for riding a bike. That's because this is YouTube, not real life. We were not gonna set up an entire wheel with a completely roasted tire just to pretend. This is a pretty significant sidewall tear. As you can see, it is torn here, it is torn there. I think it is even torn over here. You could maybe plug this one. This one is game over, no way, Jose. Okay, and it's even going to be challenging with just a tube. So that's why we wanted to bring this tire out and have a go at it. Okay, so for a shorter ride or somewhere where we're riding where we know we're always pretty close to civilization, what we showed you earlier with the CO2 on the bike and the plug on the bike, that might be all that we carry. However, for big rides, if you're going into the back country, if you're doing like a long cross country race that is unsupported or an enduro race that's unsupported, you should carry a tube. I think everybody knows this, but along with your tube, you should also have a tire lever unless you are much stronger than me. You might be, but like, maybe. You might think you are, but probably not. I've been working out. <laughs> I lift, bro. <laughs> So this is a tubalito. It is super light, much lighter than a normal tube and just as strong. We do not run tubes generally. So because of that, it makes sense for us to spend the money on a few lightweight tubes like this that we will put in in case of emergency as opposed to you know having tubes all the time. Cause these are like $30 or something. All right. Usually this would be messier, but like I said, we're lying to you. This isn't real. We're not actually on a trail. We are on a trail. We're just not that far from the car. So the goal is to only take off one side. All right, so we're gonna pull one side off and then we're gonna have a look-see at our hole from this side. Okay, I can like nearly stick like my pinky finger through this. So we have a little bit of experience with these kind of holes. It doesn't look, I mean, it looks bad, but it doesn't look as bad when it's flat as it's going to look when you put a tube in. And you run the danger with a hole like this of the tube bubbling out, which is very bad because as you can imagine, then the next like rock that you come close to, that tube is exposed and pop goes the weasel. What to do about this? I mean, you can cry a little bit. I think crying is acceptable with this kind of a hole in your tire, especially if you're racing, because this is, this is a bummer. And then, What's good for crying and holes in your tire is eating a snack because we're gonna fix this with a bar wrapper. We already ate our bar because we're piggies. You couldn't wait for the video. But if you have a bar, which this is a long ride, hopefully you have a bar or a dollar bill will also work, but it won't feed you. So we recommend the bar method. We're gonna use this as a, as a name, but I don't know. It doesn't really matter. A boot. A boot, yeah. So basically that's gonna go in there it's gonna press up against that. It's gonna give that sidewall a little bit more support. So I think I'm probably gonna pop the tube in first and I'm gonna have to take my valve core out. If you are swapping tubes, you're going from tubed to tubed, <laughs> tube to tube, then you don't need to worry about pulling out your valve core. I do recommend having a plan for where you're gonna put this just in general, like have a pocket that you put little things in. Don't put it on the ground, basically. You'll never find it again. Okay, this is actually good. So if you can't get it out like that, grew the, the lock ring back on halfway and then push against the lock ring. And if that still doesn't work, then use your tire lever, put your tire lever flat on that side and then push up with both hands. There we go. There she goes. And obviously you take this off again and then you're gonna screw it back on, put it in your pocket and you're gonna not put it on the ground. Honestly, in general, that can be like one of the most frustrating things about fixing things on the side of the trail is when you lose on the ground. We're gonna talk about this more when we do an episode on fixing a broken chain because people lose their quick links all the time. You wanna explain why we cover the uh, valve? Yeah, if you cover it with electrical tape, then if it, as it's on your bike and rubbing against the rest of the tube, it doesn't actually puncture the tube. So why are you blowing it up by, by mouth? This one. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it, it's a little helpful if it has a little bit of shape to it. But why not use your CO2 instead? Because I don't want to waste my CO2. Come on. There it is. Oh, that is orange, orange, orange. 
What is the one other thing that you wanna do? Not pinch your tube. Yeah, well, even before you put the tube in, you wanna make sure that there is nothing sharp in the tire. Cause like if you got a puncture because of a goat head or a nail or something like that, That's a very good point. make sure you get that spine or goat head or nail out. This one we know went flat because of a sidewall slice. So we aren't worried about uh, that. Still worth checking though. Still it's a good point. Yeah. I mean, we know it was a rock. But if you put your tube in and then you go to pump it up and there's a thorn in there, then your tube is wasted. Also, I would say generally, like don't sit in the middle of the trail while you're doing this. <laughs> we just have a pretty good idea that there's not that many people here and we're gonna hear them coming, but like, don't do what I'm doing. Come back. Okay, so this is good. We put a little bit of air in it. We can see what's going on and we can find our hole again. There it is. Okay, great. So we're just gonna slide this wrapper in there. Again, this is not necessary unless you have a pretty big hole, but if you do have a pretty big hole, you might as well do this from the get-go because there's no way of telling how much it will bubble exactly, but. And you don't want to waste a CO2 and then have to take the tire back off and then put a boot in and then, yeah. I find putting a little bit of air in at this stage is helpful to prevent like pinching the tube between the tire and the bead, which is definitely a thing that happens with tubes, which is very annoying. If you make, if you squeeze the tire all the way around like that, then the tube is centered. You know, you're not gonna pinch it between the bead. Yellow. And we're on. Okay, nice. great. We have a tube. We're gonna air this the rest of the way up. And then we'll take a look at our boot and see what's going on. We finished our CO2. We're just gonna use a floor pump on the rest, but we do have another CO2. We don't wanna waste another CO2. You would be doing this with a CO2 or a very tiny pump normally. This is the part where if you do have a pressure gauge, you air it up to like, a lot more than you usually run when you're running tubeless. At least five PSI, if not 10. If you don't have a pressure gauge with you, hard. <laughs> it will be bouncy, it will be unpleasant, tubes suck, but it's better than walking. You can actually see a little bit of the writing on the scratch bar through there. This is not too bad. I've had one where you could read like a whole sentence, but I do think you would be in danger of getting a little bit of tube bubble out of there without the boot and the bonus now we've shown you how to do a boot. Okay, so we've shown you a lot of options today. There is one thing left to talk about. If you are going on a very long ride, if you're going out in the back country, if you are bike packing, you should be carrying a patch kit. As you can see from everything we've talked about, there are a lot of options before you get to patching tubes. So I haven't personally patched a tube since I was in high school. I don't know, I don't even remember. But I still carry this with me because you never know when you're just gonna have that really bad day where the plugs don't work, you put a tube in, you flat your tube, you're 20 miles from anything. That's why you carry a hand pump and a patch kit. So we like these little glueless patch kits. We're just gonna talk through how you would do it. We are not going to do it today. This is actually not the proper patches for the Tubalito, so probably need to update my kit here. This is just for a standard tube. Pretty self-explanatory. You just open this, you find the hole, you take the sandpaper, you rough it up, and you pluck one of these patches on. It's still kind of a sign of a bad day <laughs> using a patch kit, but we do carry that in our kit. And we also carry a hand pump for any big rides because sometimes you use your CO2s trying to plug something that won't plug and having a tube is no good. So we hope this was helpful for you and we'll keep you guys riding and having fun and keep your bikes in working order this summer. Thanks.
Here's how to fix a flat on the trail in one minute. If the puncture is small enough to cover with your pinky finger, try rotating your wheel so that the hole is at the bottom and see if the tire sealant will seal the puncture. Sometimes this requires a minute or so while the sealant interacts with the air and hardens. If the sealant won't seal the puncture or the hole is fairly large, it's time for a tubeless plug. Find the hole and use the applicator to push the plug into the hole. Then hold the plug in place while you remove the applicator. If you have a knife on hand, trim the plug so that it is as close to flush with the tire as possible. Spin the wheel so the plug is at the bottom. This will allow the sealant to fill any small gaps around the plug. Now grab your CO2 or hand pump and inflate the tire. If the puncture is too big to be repaired with a tubeless plug or you already have a tube in your tire, it's time to put in a tube. First, see how big the hole is. If you can fit your pinky finger into it, you'll need a boot as well. Lots of things will work as a boot. For example, you can use a bar wrapper or dollar bill. First, remove your wheel, then remove one side of your tire using a tire lever. Now check the inside of your tire for anything that could puncture your tube. If you were running tubeless, remove the valve stem and put it somewhere safe. Don't put it on the ground. Inflate the tube a bit, then insert it into the tire. If you're using a boot, place it inside the tire over the hole. Now install the second side of the tire, making sure not to pinch the tube between the wheel and the tire bead. Inflate using a CO2 or hand pump, reinstall your wheel, and continue your ride. Thank you.